What's going on guys? It's Bucky and welcome to your, let's see what tutorial it is, 51st I think, UDK tutorial and in this tutorial, actually in the upcoming tutorials, what I'm going to be teaching you guys is going to be awesome. I'm finally going to kind of step away from putting the pieces together in the visual aspect of our game and we're going to be hopping into the dynamic aspect of our game, how the player can interact with the environment. And in this first tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys how you can cause damage to the environment and how the environment can realize that it's taking damage and respond to it in a certain way, however you want it to. So before I hop into that, let me just mention that I'm using the map that we used before, however I cleared everything out of it basically, so now all we have is just plain old static meshes, this wall, this podium, this wall right here, and a control panel. And remember we had a trigger right in front of here, I deleted that, and I also had a bunch of stuff in Kismet, I went and deleted that. So basically, we have a blank map, so don't think you know I set everything up beforehand because I didn't. So now let me go ahead and the very first thing I want to teach you guys is how you can shoot this control panel right here and how it can realize that you shot it and you know respond in a certain way maybe send some enemies out to you or you know do whatever it wants to do so now let me go ahead and select this control panel right here and I'm gonna go ahead and hop in Kismet and actually before I even continue I want to mention this I'm going to be moving a little bit faster from now on because now that we know the interface of the UDK and we kind of know how everything is pieced together generally when making the game, I'm going to be taking things up a little bit faster because I think it's time that, you know, like I said, we start to move a little bit faster, but I'm definitely not going to be leaving you guys behind. I just want to mention that I think it's time we move a little bit quicker and if you guys get lost and you have any questions, don't forget to ask me on my forum, thenewboston.com slash forum, and I'll be glad to answer them for you then. But like I said, it's time to kind of step away from the beginner putting the pieces together and moving in to the more advanced stuff. So go ahead and select this control panel right here and open Kismet. And I first want to introduce you guys to a new type of event. So before the only event we knew was the trigger event. So now with your control panel selected, go ahead and right click and hit new event using stat static mesh actor and I'm gonna hit take damage and now we see we now have a take damage event and you're saying alright what the heck is a take damage event well you can apply these take damage effects to these static meshes and now what's gonna happen is in your game this static mesh right here it's gonna be waiting for you to do damage to it either shooting it with a gun or running up and kicking it with your foot or hitting it with a sword anytime you do damage to it it's gonna output a signal so again aside from just flicking a trigger on and off you can also have these static mesh damages where whenever this object right here takes damage and we're gonna be shooting it with our gun it's gonna output the signal but say you're making a game and you have the player able to do damage in a bunch of different ways. You give them, you know, maybe if they bump into the object, it does one damage. Maybe if they punch it, it does five damage. If they shoot it with a gun, it does 60 damage. Or if they shoot it with, you know, a cannon, it does like 500 damage. Well, we don't want this to go off with, you know, just a little bump or anything like that. So we're going to want to go ahead and set this damage threshold down to, you know, something like uh, five or 10 or something like that. Because if we set it too high, like 500 then we're never going to be able to set the signal off because we're going to need you know a nuclear bomb but if we set it something to you know 0.5 or you know 1 then anytime we bump into it it's going to go off so set it equal to something like 5 and then whenever we shoot it with a gun it's going to respond so basically whenever we do damage to this and we're going to be shooting it with a gun it's going to output something and something is going to happen so just for the sake of this tutorial I'm just going to make a real quick announcement play so I'm going to go ahead and hit new action um, I'll just write a regular announcement I guess play announcement so now whenever I do damage to it aka shoot it with a gun an announcement is going to play so now let me change the properties of the announcement and the text is going to be like WTF Bucky don't shoot me with an explanation point. So now let me go ahead and X out of this and I might as well X out of this and hop over into right there and check it out. 
you need to right click this because if you left click it it's not going to work so go ahead and right click with your mouse and look what happens it says WTF Bucky don't shoot me and again if we do it more than once it isn't going to go off again so it's only going to go off one time and the reason for that is if you're wondering what's going on in this take damage event that happens you're going to have a property let me find it that says max trigger count and it says how many times can this event be activated zero for infinite well we only want it to be activated one time because we're just going to look at it this way once we shoot it one time then it's ruined we can't use it anymore so again you can go ahead and set it to zero and this will make it so every time you shoot it it'll say what did we put WTF Bucky don't shoot me but I'm gonna go ahead and you usually want to set them to one because usually when you destroy something you know it gives you a signal or it locks the door or you know turns on a light and that's it you shoot it one time and it's over so I just want to explain it to you guys because in these tutorials I'm gonna be keeping it one but if you want to change it for your game that's how you change it so for now I just wanna you know give you a little piece of this tutorial because in the next tutorial we're gonna be adding some more static meshes and I'm gonna be showing you guys a really cool feature but for now that's all you guys get so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time